Because I think uh, in all your work, uh, there is this common thread of uh, that the complete dis- disturbance that the idea of identity already has, where someone like you, would you ever bother uh, worrying about uh, uh, a, what's called today cultural appropriation? Does it matter to you? Would no, you worry no, it about doesn't it? Bother. It doesn't bother me. It does, in fact, actually, I get annoyed with people who believe that there that there is only one identity that I inhabit. I've never inhabited only one identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think actually, as a queer person, uh, one mm-hmm. is. I f- I find that to be more and more important nowadays. To to be able to really think about uh, if you're growing up queer in Bombay or in India or mm-hmm. in the world, uh, there is no other. I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. There is no person that you can look up to. You don't exist, my friend. Mm-hmm. There's no person on the other side of the damn mirror. Try and understand that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if that person exists, that person is just a strange kind of creature. Like, Almost a shadow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, whatever, right? What, mm-hmm. you, have, you have a certain kind of demonization. Right. Demonization of, of that very... Uh, figure mm-hmm. uh, and that itself uh, so what does that do actually hmm? because finally to be you have to kind of constantly you need mirrors no, around you mm-hmm. yeah uh, so what you do is that you start uh, frag- you, you start donning fragmented mirrors is that you have like you start making up uh, identities mm-hmm. you take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then you start kind of performing these different sorts of imagination. So I've never had what they call a hero or a, what do you call the mentor? I don't. Yeah. Never had. They, they are all like whatever. But I've had many people whom I've stolen from or learned from, I mm. guess you could call it. Yeah. Uh, because I think that's what being queer allows you to do. It allows you to construct your own sense of identity. Mm-hmm. And that construction of identity doesn't happen in a void. It happens by stealing. Mm-hmm. Okay. It happens because there's no one is giving it to you for God's sake. So you have to steal. Yeah. 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 I mean, architecture so, also in in uh, learning architecture also we grew up being told draw yeah, a I drawing mean, by a famous guy and see what you can steal yeah so I don't have so when, so when I think about cultural appropriation and all of those things right I think that actually some of the greatest work I love, most of the work I love happens when cultures mix and collapse and corrupt each other. You know? mm-hmm. Like rock music. I love rock music because of that, actually. You know, mm-hmm. the work of uh, whatever, MIA. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Right? It's full of these sorts of collapses which are so incredibly exciting. Queen. Uh, this- a city like Bombay is so alive because of these collapses. Those don't happen because of like unified identities. Uh, it's through only these sorts of pollutions and corruptions really that that energies come. Mm. So when I think about this idea of kind of identity politics, now I understand why it's necessary. Okay, I understand why it's necessary because it's important to don that identity to be able to claim a right. So whether that's whether you're you know in in, in, in whether that's a queer queer identity, but. But to imagine that I am only that would be reducing the possibilities of what I can be to being merely that. And I don't ever want to do that to myself. Right. I want to be able to enjoy a Rajnikanth film and I want to be able to enjoy a Tarkovsky film. And I want to be able to listen to Hindi film music and I want to be able to listen to uh, whatever, you know. I, I want to allow myself the possibility of being multiple people. Yeah, Chirag and I have a very almost unhealthy obsession with Kawali at the moment. Yeah. It's... Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's. I think it just makes your life more pleasurable, and you seem to enjoy much more. And you also are. And if and also it allows me to be a little more generous to people. But Ron, you would you would never say there is a bad stealing. Uh, not not. I'm not suggesting ethics here. I'm saying. Uh, uh, Taking aspects of uh, different works and trying to produce and create something, but uh, no, it's it, there must be a value is there scale a, or a value system of figuring out which cultural object. Yeah, I agree. Is I agree. there a is there a 
critical mass of subjectivities in a yeah. way yeah you know so see i would say that like you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of exo- i'm saying this is absolutely amazing to kind of steal things and stuff like that but yes one has to be uh one has to understand also mm-hmm. okay uh, that there are works that come out of very particular sorts of histories mm-hmm. if one is going to be stealing from them one has to also uh, also keep in mind that you're also stealing a part of that history mm-hmm. okay. and it is important to acknowledge that mm-hmm. it's important to know that you that 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 the work is not only image that you can happily appropriate and do whatever you want to with it mm-hmm. okay. mm. uh, that it comes holding something at the back and that's it's important to know that or or to uh a terrible word but use it uh, mm. as uh, uh, that it would provide a new meaning to it or a, or a reinterpretation yeah because it also there's a there is and there, there is a, a point where you need to understand that your own position comes from a certain position of power that is allowing you to appropriate things absolutely yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, many people do not necessarily have that possibility i belong to a certain place where i am allowed that freedom to, mm-hmm. to appropriate mm-hmm. uh, there are people who do not necessarily have the position where they can where they are not allowed to where every single thing that is theirs is really theirs and they really want to hold on to it it would be stupid of me to simply come and take it and you know kind of play with it just because i can mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that kind of respect should be there i think i mean one can't you know but but one can also uh, kind of be uh, be respectful of it and also uh, find what one wants to within it it's not a easy thing to do but i think that's the kind of uh, world uh, that i would like to uh, imagine can exist and actually that's really the way that people work in the world if you look like tiktok videos and you look at things like that they are like they are you know they are, they are voicing their own uh, desires through many other people's voices all the time they are appropriating other people's faces other people's music and they are making them their own with their mm. own bodies and how do you qualify yeah. this when it happens in your let's say design studio when a student Actually, expresses a, a kind of a very specific fascination how how do you ask them to uh, uh, identify its qualities and then work with so, it i mean what you do is that if you if a guy gets your remkulas building and says mujhe na ye banana hai dost then you are like acha ye kitchen mein banana hai i'm like kyun very simple the site is there na yeah the site is there the presence is there the love for that place is there the love for those people is there and if the remkulas building is going to be able to do that then go ahead kya problem hai but it won't na it won't it can't it will change it has to change because there is the site there is the presence of the of that particular the presence of the particular cannot allow for a generic transportation of something else mm. and if it does even that is superly supremely strange like the miniature what eiffel tower in china mm-hmm. mm. how does that come but how how would the student uh, think because we we often chirag and i often try to go back to those moments where we've come across these discussions and because our thoughts are more about okay if it can't or can how do we gauge that how do we learn to see it happen in front of our eyes we want to know uh, what uh, constitutes reading uh, this kind of a appropriation how how do you read something pro appropriation when you want to appropriate something when you're reading it what do you tell your students like it's not going to work on the site and if the student says uh, but why i mean it's a building if i can fit it in in i think there is also this question you about bring the presence of the site it's very it's actually not that difficult to do hmm. we just bring the presence of the site the, the tangibility and the concreteness of that particular moment and space and time okay ah. once that exists those mm. communities exist that climate mm. exists all of those exist you have that na that will automatically weigh the particular dump it is it's not easy to simply kind of take villa sawa and dump it even uh, even in alibag actually mm. yeah <laughs> difficult to do mm. 